From the Room and Area section of the Home tab, we can choose the Room tool. The Room tool automatically senses room bounding elements, like walls and ceilings, so we don't need to explicitly go through and define every room boundary line. Let's go ahead and place room objects. We may want the room numbers to have a scheme in order, so let's change the number to 301 so that all the following rooms are numbered with the next number in sequence. There are occasions where we do need to add a room boundary to separate spaces which otherwise have no physical barrier between them. For example, we want to separate off the stair space. Be careful that lines do not overlap and that they form closed loops. Once those room separation lines are placed, we can go ahead and place their room objects. Let's generate a room schedule. If we go to the View tab, choose Schedule, Selecting Room as the category, click OK. Let's first go ahead and add a parameter called Room Type, which will hold data about how the room is used, as an office, classroom, bathroom, etc. It's a common parameter, text type, and grouped under Identity Data. Let's add these other fields. Area, Ceiling Finish, Floor Finish, Wall finish. We can order them as desired. The finishes are other parameters we defined in the same way as the room type. Let's sort and group by room type and then by number. Let's not forget to check Calculate Totals for the area. At this point, we can add data to our schedule from whichever view is easiest, whether Plan View or Schedule View. To name the room types, we're better off using the Floor Plan View so we can identify what each room is. These are offices. I can label them as such individually or select many and enter their room type parameters all at once. Here we have classrooms, conference room. Finally, a room type we'll call corridor, elevators, a utility room, bathrooms, and the stair. Let's add our legend, color coding by room type. I'm changing the colors so that they're all easily distinguishable one from the next. Let's set the scale to 1 16th for better readability. To clean up the view sum, we'll remove the room name. Selecting all and filtering out all but the rooms, we can easily clear that field so that nothing more than the room number displays. After all, the legend itself identifies the room type.
Now back in the schedule, we see the results of our room type classification, as everything is now grouped neatly by type. From here, it becomes much easier to enter the finished types, since they will be rather consistent across each room type. The bathrooms will have acoustic tile, ceramic floors, and gypsum board. Classrooms will have acoustic tile, polished concrete, and gyp board. Conference rooms will have acoustic tile, carpet, and gyp board. Offices will have open ceilings, polished concrete, and gyp board. To quickly change the instance properties for these parameters across many rooms at once, I can select them in the plan view and change their properties in the properties palette. And there I've almost finished my finishes. Now let's place the room plan and schedules on a sheet. I see that the level 3 plan view has already been placed on a sheet requiring me to duplicate and create a dedicated view since we are only allowed views to appear on no more than one sheet. We'll drag and drop the view onto the sheet. We can crop it to only show Quad Building 1. Let's set it to a 1 half inch scale. We can rearrange it, preparing to place the schedule. Next, we drag and drop the schedule to the sheet. And directly in the sheet, we can resize columns for better readability and fit. And now the sheet contains the building information, both in graphical and tabular format.